Now here it is, Liberty Call. Hi everyone, my name is Bob. I've been a volunteer on the Slater here since uh, 2017. Um, in 2016, I came down right at the end of the season and uh, toured the ship and uh, I was quite surprised at how small it is because uh, I, I was uh, I'm a Navy vet and I, I served on a destroyer back in the, in the 60s. Um, I just thought it would be a fun thing to do to talk to people about uh, what uh, the sailors went through uh, during World War II because I have a fairly decent experience myself of what we went through on, on, on my ship, which is very similar to this. It was a little bit bigger, but not that much. And I felt that uh, uh, doing tours and, and giving um, presentations about what it was like to be on one of these things uh, would be uh, a fun thing to do. I was in the uh, Navy from the, uh, the late 65 to 69. I was a sonarman and um, served aboard a destroyer called USS Cone, DD-866, which was a ship that was built relatively about the same time this one was, uh, where they modified it in the early 60s to uh, make it so it could uh, uh, fire long-range torpedoes with a rocket behind it, and, uh, um, and, that, and of course the sonar was upgraded too. So uh, as a sonarman, um, I also helped out with uh, loading this uh, what's called ASROC, um, which is an anti-submarine rocket, a big torpedo with a rocket behind it, and it would fire out from the ship and, and go out about 10,000 yards, and then the torpedo would go down and look for the submarine. Uh, a couple of things. I like um, taking people around and meeting people from all over the world. And uh, also I like uh, um, coming down to the ship and hanging out with the uh, staff that's here, uh, both the young people and the guides my age. And uh, I think it's really well run. It's uh, one of the queen ships of the museum fleet and um, um, it's just a joy to take folks around because everything kind of works or moves and all that so it was it's just people enjoy it actually no i think the whole thing is fun because when you go to each area uh, there's always something new to explain and some kind of story to tell and uh, each each of our tour stops our tour stops have it has its own kind of flavor and what you can talk about. The bridge is much different than the engine room and uh, the, um, the uh, galley is much different than the mess decks and the officers area there. Uh, I like to ask the kids if they know, won't know what the phone is and a lot of them do and a lot of them know how to operate it which surprises me. Um, I think um, how to deal with people a little bit more, how to read the what the group is like and so how much to you want to tell them and, or not tell them and uh, uh, just to becoming a better guide and when I go on tours of other places I always watch the uh, how those guides work and, and how they relate to people and try and bring that into my own uh, tours um, so um, it's it's a it's a it's a learning process all the time and then you hear more and more anecdotes from the other the other guys and you can kind of fold them into uh, what you're talking about too so that makes it more interesting because the whole goal is to make it interesting for the folks you're bringing around um, yeah, there's uh, several. I took around a couple of blind boys one time. They were teenagers, and uh, so that was a very <laughs> different kind of tour. Uh, but they were very enthusiastic, and it was I had to be kind of careful what or how they uh, how I could let them touch things. Um, I remember when we back went back to the uh, depth charges. I was saying, don't don't touch here. You'll get grease on your hands. They wanted to reach into the breach there of the K gun, and uh, and then. Um, and there was another couple from Wisconsin whose dad served aboard one of these ships, and uh, uh, they got thrilled by the fact that they, like, we could take him back to after birthing, and he could see the area where his dad was actually uh, had his bunk and climbed in himself, and, and then took a picture. And then there was a, a young lady who was in a homeschool homeschool group who uh, um, was sort of a little bit precocious, and after the tour was over, I asked her. <laughs> Uh, so how'd you like it? And I was expecting that she'd say it's probably bored, but she said I'd much rather listen to you than my mother, mother talk about physics and maths. <laughs> you always get different reactions. <laughs> uh, kind of some of the things I just said, again, I enjoy uh, taking people around and I enjoy coming down and talking to uh, uh, all the other volunteers here. And, uh, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm really impressed by how well run the ship is, uh, how, how well run the museum is. It's, it's, it amazes me, all of the components of it, the, the director and Shanna and, and Joanne do their thing and you 
um, interns do your thing and us old guys guides do our thing kind of and then the, uh, the re restoration guys are doing their thing and it all meshes together in a really nice way and uh, it just impresses I'm impressed by that that organizational kind of um, view uh, I said uh, well we need them and I thank you for asking and then I bring them into the the visitor center and uh, and, and, and try and have set that up with uh, whoever's uh, on, on duty that day or, or whoever's in the office. <laughs> now this is a Navy, this is a Navy uh, museum. It's not a tank museum. It's not an army museum. <laughs> so, uh, and then, well, if we did have a tank museum or a tank, I would want it to be able to run around the parking lot and be able to shoot. <laughs> and you'd have to do the maintenance. <laughs> <laughs>